If you're a business analyst and you know AI is the next skill you need to master, but you're not quite sure how to get real, tangible, useful results, this video is for you. Maybe you've tried AI, but the outfit puts felt a little bit off, right? Or maybe you haven't even started using it yet because it feels so overwhelming and you're not sure where to begin. Or you might be using it daily, which is a great best practice, but you still know there's more potential for you to unlock. Here's the truth. It's not just about using AI. It's about how you communicate with it. And prompt engineering is a critical skill for business analysts to develop to be more purposeful and intentional with AI. So in this video, I'm going to show you five types of results that you can expect from AI with plus practical prompt examples that you can use to help you draft, refine, and even improve a business process so that you can start adding more value with AI today. By the way, I'm Laura Brandenburg with Bridging the Gap, where we help you start, succeed, and excel in your business analyst career with weekly videos on business analysis, tips, and techniques. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure to do so and then hit that notification bell to stay in the loop with all of our new videos. Okay, so let's talk about the five different types of results that you can expect from AI when you engineer your prompts successfully. So type one is to draft. You can create a first draft of just about any type of deliverable um, and results will be improved when you use annotated templates to train AI on what you expect. I will be sharing a bit, an example of this as we get into the practical demo in just a minute. So the second way is to refine. So you can ask AI to make updates, very specific updates, um, or revise the deliverable to meet a specified standard, right? So you can start with nothing and have it draft a document, that's way number one, or you can give it a document and have it make refinements to that document, that's number two. Number three is that you can identify questions. So at, you could upload a deliverable or even some meeting notes and ask AI to just, what questions should I be asking next? And use that to help you create more clarity and alignment in your stakeholder discussions. Number four is that you can ask AI to help you optimize. So suggesting improvements or ways to improve a deliverable to meet a specific business objective. And then number five is that you can have AI help you do research. This is even before you get to deliverables, AI can help you brush up on terminology, explore a new domain, kind of get into the weeds. And a lot of people are still feeling constrained because they don't have maybe a company specific tool that they can use for AI. Uh, and so they feel like they, and you, they shouldn't be sharing proprietary information with AI, which is completely the case. You always wanna check your organizational policies and make sure that anything you put into a public chat GPT or other instance of AI is okay to be sharing. But even if you can't share proprietary information, you can ask generic questions and you can do research about your industry and domain, about the systems that your, that your company uses, all kinds of other types of research that allow you to get started. You can also even use it to help you draft deliverables and I'll share an example of that when we get into the demo. Just kind of as a high level, I tend to use AI as a co-collaborative partner, right? I might write a rough prompt first and then revise what I'm writing to get the result I want and expect. And I think, you know, if you've only used it a couple times and you haven't quite gotten a great result, kind of that revision process of your prompt and kind of going back and how can I add more context? How can I train AI? How can, what would I tell? I like to say, what would you tell a highly intelligent high school student? about what you need, what output you expect, and use that as your guide to give AI more context to get a better result of what you're looking for. Um, other approaches are to put a lot more initial work into that first prompt to engineer a so-called perfect response. There's two different ways, two different strategies. It's not better or worse. I kind of like to 
see how loose I can be and like what it needs to get refined as I go. That's also the way I often will work with my stakeholders, but you could definitely put more time and attention into really, really getting in, deep, in depth with your prompts and you'll probably get a better response right from the beginning. But that is also more time and labor intensive from the beginning. So just keep that in mind. All right, so enough of the kind of general, let's look at a very specific example. So this is an example of how to draft a business process using ChatGPT. You could use this kind of prompt with any type of AI tool you have access to. In our programs, we have participants who are using custom GPTs created by their company. Copilot is really common. Some have private instances of a chat GPT type tool or um, tools bedded into other applications. So it doesn't really matter what the tool is so much. It's how you engineer the prompt to get a good response that I want you to take away from this. So you can tell here I've uploaded a business process template. This is actually available for free and there will be a link to download it or a button to download it here, as well as an opportunity to download it in the link below this video. So this is an annotated template and let me just show you what that template looks like. All of this blue text is instructional text. And when I wrote this, it was instructional text for the BAs who were using this template. Now it can be instructional text for the AI who is going to use this template to give me what I want. Okay, so we've got purpose, entry criteria, inputs, activity descriptions. I'm not gonna go through all this because you can download this and look at these annotations themselves, yourself, but I just wanted you to know what this input is because this is the kind of context I'm talking about. So I've uploaded this document, this template in the prompt, and then I'm saying using this template and the instructions provided, please draft a current state business process to document document to enroll new composting customers. And then I've done a bit of work here for AI, right? So I didn't just, I could, you could do this as your prompt and you could get all different kinds of results depending on what AI feels like should be that process. In this case, I felt like I understood some pieces of the process. I just didn't want to do all the work of typing it out. So I have here some, some steps. I've done this with just a few steps and asked AI to fill in the details. This is a more detailed prompt. And then I also have some business rules. We need to handle these kinds of situations, right? So here is the draft it created, um, which has all like a great purpose statement. This starts one, ends one is exactly how I teach it. Clarity that it's an as is process. That was in the, the annotated text. Inputs that are good, activity strip descriptions that are pretty good. Um, and then as I reviewed it, though, I noticed a few things. So I noticed here, um, once billing is confirmed, that's not how I teach people to do things. That is a missing step, right? So we need somebody to confirm that billing has come through. Um, so AI kind of had a little shortcut there. These are kinds of things that I pick up when I review deliverables for our participants. Um, but it had some great exceptions. I also didn't really love how it put the exception both in the step and here. And so uh, we're gonna have it update to, to handle some of those things. Let's go down. So overall though, great first draft. And I said, you know, this is great, thanks so much. There are some updates I would like you to make. So first, please number the exception flows. They were not numbered. Second, please remove the details of those exception flows from those activity descriptions and refer to them by a short description. Third, rewrite that once the billing is confirmed piece to remove passive voice and add an active step for that. And finally, review the entire process again for any ambiguities similar to that third update, right? This is like, there should be no passive voice or language is, that isn't clear and prescriptive about who is doing what. It summarized what I wanted it to do. Let's just look at how it did here. Uh, so it did, it took out the exceptions and referred to them by number. So that's a big improvement. It also um, added some text here to confirm. So it's still not perfect. Like I would not have after confirmation. That's a bit vague. Um, there's a few things, but at this point, I feel like I've reached the point of diminishing returns of having AI make the update. It probably just makes sense for me to go in and update this, this myself, right? So that's a great, um, you know, you, you're not asking AI to be quote unquote perfect. 
you're asking AI to give you a result that you can then tweak. You also notice I didn't ever have these like 10 business days, five business days, these rules. AI put that in. So those would be things where I would want to verify with my stakeholder uh, and kind of have some conversation about, right? So you're always going to want to do that analysis work and that conversation work. Okay, so now let's look at the next prompt. So what else can we do with this? Now that we're in this thread where AI understands the, the process I'm analyzing, now I'm saying I'm reviewing this process with the sales rep. Can you provide a list of questions I should be asking them to validate this process and explore other nuances? Now, what was interesting here is that my next question was going to be around optimize, right? And how to improve the process. AI sort of jumped ahead for me. I was gonna show you two different, um, two different prompts because you can also just ask AI to say, would you like to, can you show me any improvement opportunities or suggest any improvement opportunities? It went ahead and did that for me. So there were some questions here um, around it. I mean, so many questions. So actually, if I was gonna use these for a real meeting, I would ask them to winnow them down or maybe pick out a few that seemed the most relevant and ask for some expansions around those particular questions. So, you know, that's just, there's so much here to work with. Um, you know, a lot of people say, I'm, I'm going into a stakeholder meeting. I don't know what questions to ask. Well, this is a great way to start to have AI help you know what questions to ask. So now let's take a step back. Even if you can't share proprietary information with AI, again, you can use it to do some research. So some other prompts I could have used for this particular scenario would be something like, what are the best practices for helping a customer set up a new subscription-based service via a web-enabled business process, right? So I already know that I would love to make this a web-enabled business process versus a manual process. So what are some best practices around that? What are some hesitations that potential customers have when it comes to a service providing compost pickup? Right, so you could ask that question whether or not you're in a company-specific kind of private instance. Where are customers most likely to get stuck in an online transaction to set up a new subscription? Again, super generic prompt, but could give you some really interesting information for your specific scenario. And can you give me the basic steps of a business process to set up a new subscription? Or can you give me a business process to set up a new dis subscription and just not kind of leave the nuances of your company out, right? And then you can go back in and fill those in after the fact. So just, you know, a lot of people, again, complain or kind of fear about how much information they're sharing with AI and not having the company support yet to use a private instance. There's still ways to use it for work-related scenarios that are going to help you be more productive. Business process is just one of many business analysis techniques, right? You can use this for a wide variety of business analysis techniques. The key thing I want you to take away is that AI needs context and it will do better when you are specific about what you want as a result and provide it some good input, particularly annotated templates. They are a great way to train AI on what you expect. And again, you can download that business process template that I showed you absolutely for free using the link on the screen or down below. Um, and you could use that to start training AI to create process documents for you. Uh, another key point is just expect to iterate through this. You're not always gonna get exactly what you want the first time. Revise your prompt, ask for updates, clarify. Um, it's a lot like working with a stakeholder and needing to ask the same question a few different ways to get the results you're looking for. And again, if you're on the fence, just get started. Practice using AI each and every day. This is not a fad, AI is not going anywhere. And as you learn and get better at engineering prompts for your work as a business analyst, you are going to be more prepared to help your teams and your stakeholders do the same. And that's what's you know, coming next. There are already some organizations that are on the leading edge of deploying AI within their businesses, within their business processes. And there's some great business analysts doing that work. But if your organization is not, you need to start here so that you are ready to help your stakeholders 
adopt AI when your organization is starting to push for that? Because often it's going to be like, once it's there, you're going to be down that road and you really want to be positioned with a strong AI skill set to thrive in a continued career as a business analyst. And so if you do want even more help on amplifying your value and being more strategic and kind of thinking ahead about what's coming, both with AI, but also with strategic business analysis, I do have a video on creating a scope document that will really help you be more forward thinking and proactive about managing scope. And in that video, I shared another example of how to engineer an AI prompt to draft documentation. And if you just really want to dig deeper on the how-to of analyzing a business process and kind of understand that template and what all goes into that, I've also got an in-depth tutorial for you to watch next. So wherever you go, I'll see you there. Thank you for doing what you do as a business analyst. We build our profession one business analyst at a time, and success starts with you. I'll see you over there.